morning, Grace Valley. Uh, good to see you all. Let us worship together. I'm going to read Acts chapter 16, 27 to 40. Acts chapter 16, 27 to 40. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for light, rushed in and fell trembling before the Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sir, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then he, they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and was there was their wounds there immediately he and all his household were baptized the jailer broke them into his house and set a meal before them he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in god he and his whole household when it was a daylight the magistrates sent their officers to the to the jailer with the, with the order, release those men. The jailer told Paul, the magistrates had ordered, have ordered that you, you and Silas be released. Now you can leave, go in peace. But Paul said to his officers, they beat us publicly without a trial. And even though we are Roman citizens, and threw us into prison, and now do they want to get rid of us quietly? No, let them come themselves and escort us, uh, us out. The officers reported this to the magistrates, and they, when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were alarmed. They came to appease them and escorted them from prison, requesting them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas came out of prison, they went to Lydia's house, where they met with the brothers and sisters and encouraged them. Then they left. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we before you, we want to hear the word of God. Open our hearts, Lord, touch with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last week, uh, my sermon title was uh, Let Us Witness and Manifest Jesus. I talk about two points. Two points. First, witnessing and manifesting Jesus starts from your, our heart. The key to the, this, uh, this was in my previous sermon, yes, you can praise in all circumstances. This is uh, the before last week uh, sermon title. If you believe, uh, if you if you you know still remember, sorry, we find out the key was uh, having Jesus in our heart. Uh, only then we can give you praise in all circumstances, allow allowing us to witness and manifest Him. Without having Jesus in our hearts, we cannot witness and manifest Jesus. Second, witnessing, manifesting Jesus is also overcoming temp temptations. Temptation is a trap set by Satan to take away and ruin the opportunities of witnessing and manifesting Jesus in our lives. Our Lord Jesus showed an example, resisting the temptation to avoid the the cross and walking toward it voluntarily. Today, we are going to uh, look into the third, and fourth, and fifth ways of witnessing and manifesting Jesus. Third, when we have a respect and compassion on others' lives, we can witness and manifest Jesus. Let us read it together, verse 27-28, that illustrate how Paul reacted when the jealous was trying to kill himself. 
The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here. From the way, Paul shouted urgently, we can't tell that. He was more concerned about the jailer's life than what would happen to his own life. You may wonder why Jailer made such an extreme decision to take his own life, but he's, he did that for a good reason. At the time, on the Roman law and guard, uh, custom guards or who allowed their prisoners to escape received the penalty of their escaped prisoners. When he saw the prison doors open, he thought the prisoners had escaped and he had no choice, no hope of uh, surviving. Knowing this, Paul shouted in the loud voice assure, and assured the jailers that no one escaped. Don't harm yourself, we are all here. As we know very well, a prisoner and a prison guard are enemies. One wants to get out of prison and the other must lock him up and keep him in the prison. At the time, prison guards are typically ridiculed and restricted and abused the prisoner. So guards and prisoners could not help but hate each other and become enemies. But in today's passage, Paul, a prisoner, understood what would happen to a guard if if all prisoners escaped, and he uh, 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 empathized, uh, empathized with him, and 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 and, and had uh, compassion on him. Paul said, "We are all we are all here." He was saying that he would stay a prisoner, even if the door was open, because by doing this, this doing it. The guard's life could be spared if Paul was focused on himself and the prison door opened. He could have thought of it as an opportunity from the Lord to escape the prison. But then he wouldn't ha would have lost the opportunity to save the prison guard. However, Paul had a compassion on the prison guard's soul because he was going to die and suffer in eternal hell because he didn't know Jesus. This kind of concern and compassion on those who don't know Jesus should be in the heart of those who want to live a life of witnessing and manifesting Jesus. Fourth, before the fourth, yes. Uh, so you must have the compassion and 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 concern of the the lost soul and who is going to uh, face the you know the curse and the eternal hell. That's 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 the uh, manifesting and Jesus. Uh, uh, the you know the, the only uh, we can do. Of course, when we uh, present the gospel to the, to others clearly, we can witness and manifest Jesus. It is strange how the guard asked, Sir, what must I do to be saved? When his life was spared by Paul, he could have just said, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, but, but the guard was probably so impressed by the love and compassion Paul and Silas showed to the him, along with the way they had expressed the joy even in their misery, uh, 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 that, that they instantly wanted uh, that he instantly want the kind of life Paul and Silas had, or he might have heard what the demon possessed woman shouted, "These men are servants of the Most High God." who are telling you the way to be saved. Since God and Silas were arrested for healing that 
same woman, uh, the prison guard must have known what had happened. However, the prison guard questioned, what must I do to be saved? It's not just his question. It is a question in the hearts of everyone who has problems, pain and suffering and find no answers. Whether it's poverty, illness, relation, problem, financial difficulties, empty feeling in life, or searching for the meaning of life, people seek answers and want to be saved. Want to be saved. This is the ultimate question of humanity. This is the ultimate question of humanity. There is a clear answer to this ultimate question of humanity or question uh, about all problems and suffering. Do you want to hear that? It is believing in the Lord Jesus when you and your family will be saved. Jesus is the answer to illness. Jesus is the answer to relation problems. Jesus is the answer to financial difficulties. This is the gospel. If you don't believe that, and you cannot speak, you cannot share. And when you, we, we can speak about the gospel clearly and confidently by your testimony, we, we witness and manifest Jesus. Fifth, when we have a dignity and self-esteem as a Christians, we can witness and manifest Jesus. When his life was spared, you know, God's life, the prison guard took Paul and Silas to his, to his house and took care of them. Paul and Silas preached the gospel, of course, to the, to the guard and his household. However, even after God and his household became believers, Paul and Silas didn't uh, pressure the guard to let them escape, let them be free, but they returned turned to the prison. Let us read the verse 30, 37. But Paul said to officials, they beat us public, publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens, and threw us into prison. And now, do they want to get rid of us quietly? No. Let them come themselves and escort us, us out. It means they're in the prison. After Paul and Silas returned to the prison, the magistrates sent a message telling the officers to release them. In response, Paul pointed out the magistrates' unfair treatment and demanded the magistrate to escort them out. When we have our dignity and self-esteem as Christians, our Lord is witness and manifest through us. You heard of the Columbine High School uh, massacre and and, and, you know, you heard about the Rachel Joy Scott. The Columbine High School massacre was a mass shooting at Columbine High School in Colorado in uh, April 20, uh, 1999. Two students, Eric Harris and, and, and Dylan uh, Klebold, killed the 12 students, one teacher, and injured 33 others. This is crazy happened. Rachel Joy Scott, the first victim of the massacre, was a devout Christian, uh, and according to a, her friend, and was having lunch with her who survived the attack, told how the uh, perfect, uh, perfect, uh, 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 perpetrator uh, shout, uh, you know, Rachel in the chest. Her left arm and her left leg and, and ask, do, do you still believe in God? Rachel replied, you know I do. Uh, then they said, yeah, then stay with your God. Shot her in, in, in the head, killing her. Uh, when Rachel was 11, she visited the church that her aunt 
and uh, uncle attended and, and choose to commit herself to Christianity and Jesus. By April 1990, uh, 1998, when, when she was uh, Columbine High School, she was occasionally subject to uh, mockery by uh, several uh, of her peer, uh, several of her peers, because of her faith. Rachel documented this in a letter to a relative a year to to the to, to the day before her death. Uh, her uh, the letter include the words like that. Now that I have begun to walk my talk. They make fun of me. I don't even know what I have done. I don't even have to say anything and they turn me away. I have no more personal friends at school, but you know what? It's all worthy. The story of Rachel was made into the story. I am or I am not ashamed. It is the story about her life and the Columbia School massacre. The movie was made based on the testimonies of her family, friends, and witness, witnesses at the time of the Columbine incident and her diary, which revealed her sincere faith and concern as a Christian and a true follower of Jesus Christ. However, the movie tri uh, tra uh, trailer uh, was blocked from the YouTube without any explanation. Yeah, you know, the, nowadays they block uh, many things, all right? And, and after a few months of fierce criticism of suppressed freedom of expression, you know, this is important, freedom of expression, you know, and YouTube approved the publications of the promotional video. Uh, we must humble ourselves before the Lord and others, but it does not mean demeaning ourselves or our faith. When our Lord Jesus took before the Pontius Pilate, Pilate, the Roman governor, he stood in peace and calm with the majestic dignity as an example for us. We should also have a dignity and self-esteem as a Christian if we want to witness and manifest our Lord. Let us live a life witnessing and manifesting Jesus wherever we are, keeping our Lord in our heart, overcoming temptation, having respect and compassion for others' life, presenting the gospel to others clearly while having dignity and self-esteem as Christians. As we live to witness and manifest Jesus, we will experience happiness, meaning, and fulfillment in life. And answers to our question about life. Paul was able to do it as a prisoner. We can to with our Lord's help. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, witnessing and manifesting Jesus is our dignity since you called us and made us your children, gave us the heavenly hope we stand and live as a witness of Jesus. Once again, please help us understand our hope and our calling and truly witness and manifest Jesus in our lives, wherever we are, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to read a question for meditation. First, do you know someone who needs your compassion and help? How can you show your respect and compassion towards that person? Second, we must be able to present the gospel clearly. Do you think we you can present the gospel clearly when an opportunity is given. If not, what are you lacking in the presenting the gospel? Third, do you have a dignity and self-esteem as a Christian? What are some of the situations in, in which 
we should remind ourselves to keep dignity and self-esteem as Christians. Um, I'm going to bless you. May the uh, uh, grace of Jesus Christ and love of God the Father and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. I hope you have a great week and see you next week. Um, bye.